uh, I remind myself and all of you, uh, in the Battle of the Trench, which was one of the most difficult times for the Muslims when they were surrounded by an army five, ten times their, their quantity, when they did not have any other mechanism to support themselves. Allah says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ Remember Allah says that when the hypocrites told the believers, when the hypocrites came to the believers and said to the believers, all of mankind has gathered to attack you. You are surrounded by everyone. Aren't you scared? Aren't you terrified? فَخْشَوْهُمْ And Allah Azza wa Jal says, describing the believers, فَزَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا Their iman went up, their iman increased. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ They said, Allah is sufficient for us and He is all that we need to protect us. So, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ At times of stress, at times of difficulty, at times of fear, the mu'min turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their iman goes up and their courage comes from their faith and their strength and their determination comes from up above and Allah azza wa jal will then give them the faith that they need to overcome the tragedies that they're going to face. And dear Muslims indeed, it does appear that we're going to be facing uh, some tragedies. Uh, there might be, as Allah says in the Quran, we're going to test you uh, with something of fear and calamity and with the loss of life and with the loss of produce. And the plague is of course one of the most terrifying uh, uncertainties. And it is a time of great confusion and hysteria. And it is also a time where a lot of people die. And we do have to prepare ourselves for the possibility that uh, there might be families amongst us who will be affected, maybe even we ourselves will be affected. And we have to remind ourselves that death only comes to us when Allah has decreed. No one can protect against death, but we still take reasonable precautions. Wherever we are, death will come when Allah has preordained it. Nothing can change the time of death. Allah Azza wa Jal has decided it, but that doesn't mean we act foolishly. We act wisely and we prepare and we seek protection from a worldly perspective and we seek protection in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Realize, dear Muslims, that death during the time of a plague is in fact a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is because we learn from the ahadith that anybody who dies because of a plague during the time of the plague, they shall be blessed with the highest status possible. And that is the status of a shaheed. There are different types of shaheed. There's the shaheed of this world and the akhir, the martyr of this world and the next world. That's the highest category of martyr. And there are those who pass away in the battlefield in a legitimate fight and jihad had for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They die defending their homelands. They, they die for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the highest level of shaheed. They are not given a ghusl. They uh, are not prayed for according to the more stronger position. They are buried as they are and they will have all the blessings of martyrdom in this world and the next. There is another category of shaheed and that is the shaheed of the hereafter but not of this world. The shaheed who will get the rewards of martyrdom in the hereafter but in this world we don't treat them like a, a, a martyr. But if they die in a particular manner, as we'll explain in a while, then we expect and we hope that insha'Allah ta'ala they will get the rewards or at least many of the rewards of the shaheed. And that is a type of consolation for us. Anyone who passes away during this trial, during this plague, anyone who loses a family member, anyone who faces the death of a loved one, console yourself, console yourself with the fact that your loved one passed away with the most honorable and the highest level of honor that Allah could bestow on somebody at the time of death, and that is the honor of martyrdom. Anas ibn Malik narrates that one of his students, Yahya ibn Abi Amra, passed away. And so he asked, how did Yahya ibn Abi Amra pass away? And they said he passed away because of the plague. So Anas ibn Malik said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam say, the plague is the death of shahada for every single Muslim. Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. The plague is the death of shahada. Anybody who dies during the plague, it will be the shahada for any Muslim who dies during the uh, plague. And in another hadith in Abu Dawood, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, seven are the martyrs who shall be counted as a martyr 
even if they don't die on the battlefield. So he said, seven types of people, they will be given the blessings of martyrdom, even if they don't die on the battlefield. And he began that list. Number one on this list, he said, al matunu shaheed. The one who dies in the ta'un, the one who dies in the plague is a shaheed. And so this is the number one category of martyrdom after passing away in the battlefield. In the hadith in Bukhari, Aisha radiallahu anha says that I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about plagues. How do we understand plagues? And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the plague is a punishment that Allah sends on whomever He pleases, He pleases, and it is a mercy for the believers. So it is a punishment to one group of people, whomever Allah wills, and it is a rahmah for the believers. Then our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, listen to this hadith, there is not a single believer upon whom the plague comes and he remains in his land patient, expecting the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing with full certainty that nothing happens to him except if Allah wills it to happen to him, except that that person will get the rewards of a shaheed. This hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. Al-Hafid ibn Hajar, the famous commentator of Imam al-Bukhari Sahih, Al-Hafid ibn Hajar said, this hadith is actually broader than the one who dies in the, the plague. Because what does the hadith say? Listen to it carefully. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no one remains in a land of plague patient, sabiran, muhtasiban, expecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward uh, him. Ya'lamu, he knows with certainty that nothing will happen to him except whatever Allah has decreed. Whoever remains patient, expecting Allah's reward, full of faith, that person shall get the reward of the shaheed. Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar says, therefore, anyone who is alive during the time of a plague, and demonstrates these three characteristics, even if they pass the plague, even if they finish the plague alive, insha'Allah ta'ala, they will get the rewards of a shaheed. Muslims, dear brother and sister, don't you want to get the rewards of the shaheed? Well, Allah has given you this chance. Allah has given you an opportunity. This is a gift for you and me. This is a gift. What we do in this plague, how we react to this plague, our faith during this plague, our iman, our ihtisab, our sabr, as the hadith says, these three things, if they are good and fine, then insha'Allah ta'ala, we will get the rewards of a shaheed if we die. And even if we don't die, we'll get a longer life and we'll still get the rewards of a shaheed. What a beautiful gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we not accept this gift and then try our best to honor it and then get the rewards of a shaheed. And so we console ourselves, dear Muslims, that Allah has chosen us. Allah has chosen us to get the rewards of the shaheed. Some of us will actually end up passing away in this plague. We've already had cases across the globe of people, Muslims and non-Muslims, and of course the plague affects everybody. Some of us were going to end up meeting our Lord uh, within this plague. Some of us are going to get through this plague. All of us have the opportunity to get the rewards of a martyr, and that is really uh, our goal. Also, and it's not, it's an awkward issue to say, it's a morbid thing to say, but it needs to be said, especially to those that are at a high risk, that it is appropriate for all of us, especially those at a high risk, to sit down with our family members and have the very awkward conversations about what if we don't go through this, this plague? What is gonna happen if we move on? And I remind myself and all of you to be firm and strong and to show your iman and to explain to your loved ones that hey, whether I'm here or not, Allah will take care of you. I don't take care of you. Allah is the Rabb. Allah is the one who is Malik al-Mulk. Allah is the one who is Razzaq. Not me, not, your, not you, anybody. Allah is the Razzaq. And so if I am not here, then the one who took care of you while I'm alive will take care of you when I'm not here. And you give them the advice that you want to give them. This is also the time to cleanse your heart of any hatred, of any issues that you might have had. This is also the time to write your wills down. We don't want to make life more complicated. You know, already there's going to be tensions for those of us that move on. We want to make things very, very simple and easy. We also want to make sure 
that our medical uh, issues are very clearly communicated to our loved ones, especially for example, do we want to be intubated or not? Or what is gonna happen if we're on life support? You know, we have to, these are choices, very difficult choices. And we don't want our, our, our children, our loved ones deciding this. We wanna just make, make up our own decisions and communicate to them before that time comes so that they can say, hey, look, this is what he or she wanted and let's honor uh, their request. And these are conversations you have to have. And these are thoughts that you have to have um, as you communicate to your uh, loved ones.